Hey, this is Joe Gatos with the Sea Doc Society. Welcome to Sail a Sea Wild. Boom, boom. In this episode, we're going to answer some of your questions. So let's go. What do you got? Hi, Sea Doc. This is Talbot from Seattle. I love your Sailor Sea Wild videos. My favorite video is when the dog became friends with the orca whales. I was wondering, what does orca poo smell like? Oh, I love that episode too. That's Eba the Wonder Dog, who's out there right now saving southern resident killer whales. Oh, she's such a cutie and a star. We're pretty good friends. <laughs> <laughs> to save endangered killer whales, we need to check on their health. The old way to get samples was to use darts that are like giant needles. Ow! 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 ow. <laughs> but nowadays, we can get lots of samples without even touching them. We just need to find their poop. Ooh, ooh, there, there, I see some now. Nah, that's just a brown jellyfish. So this is where we need Eba. As we learned in that episode, Eba uses her superpowers in her nose to find whale poop. It's like a dog's dream job. She sniffs it out, tells her team where it is, and then they scoop it up and send it to the lab. Not many people ever even get to see whale poop, let alone smell it. So that's a great question, Talbot. We don't know what it smells like to Eba, but to us, it smells fishy which makes sense, because that's what they eat. Yeah, he's still that good. It's not that bad, but you still wouldn't want to suck it into your snorkel. I'm Dan from Anacortis. Crab season's coming up, got any tips? Just a little lemon butter for me. Thanks, Dan. When we did our episode on ghost fishing gear, we talked about how recreational crabbers lose more than 12,000 traps in Puget Sound every year. That's a huge problem that trashes up the ocean and needlessly kills hundreds of thousands of crabs. We're all for fishing, as long as it's done responsibly so everyone can enjoy it. Here are some tips on how we catch lots of crabs. One of the most important things that people forget is weighting the pot. You need to add a little bit extra weight to get this pot down and to keep it down through the tidal change. A properly weighted pot will not drift. And a pot that drifts is not gonna catch crab. And what we've done here, just put some rebar on the outside. Pretty simple, out. <laughs> when you rig these pots, you wanna have one area that's gonna have some sacrificial twine on it. So if the pot does get lost, this degrades and then it creates an opening. So crabs can go in and more importantly, crabs can go out. So it doesn't continue to fish forever. Also, be sure to use leaded line so it sinks. And this is how we tell the difference between a male and a female crab. We turn them upside down. And what you hear, see here is actually the tail. The male, it's very small, and the female, it's quite wide. And it's easy to remember females are gonna be wider because she's gonna hold her eggs right underneath this area right here. Female, male. We only keep the males. It's a boy, it's but it's too small. Too small. Mm -hmm. This is a female. Go back there and make us some more crabs, babies. Whoa, mother load. <laughs> Look at this. The proof is in the pot. Hi, Sea Doc. This is Julius and James in Fairfax, California. We see a lot of birds here on the Salish Sea. They're easy to tell apart when they're up close, but how can you tell them apart when they're flying way high? What's the difference between a vulture and an eagle? Hi, Julius and James. Yeah, that's a tricky identification, especially when you're in a place where there's a lot of eagles and a lot of vultures, like around here. These are both amazing birds. Some people don't like vultures, but they're really, really important. Their stomachs can digest almost anything. They even gobble up animals that have died of nasty diseases, like rabies. Yum. But they don't get sick. And by eating dead stuff, vultures clean and disinfect the environment. So other animals, like us, Stay healthy. And eagles? Well, they're just super cool. <coughs> Up close, you can see the obvious difference in these animals by looking at the head. 
Bald eagles are not really bald. They're like me. When they're young, their skulls are covered with a luscious brown growth. And as they mature, it takes on a distinguished white. Vultures, on the other hand, really are bald. They make a living out of sticking their head inside dead animals. Blood, guts, and goo do not make for good hair products. As different as they are close up, from far away, eagles and vultures both just look like big dark birds. They have similar dark brown feather colors on their wings and their bodies. At the tips of their wings, they both have feathers called primaries that stick out like our fingers. All of this makes it very difficult to tell them apart while they're flying, especially when they're silhouetted against a very bright sky. Caw, 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 caw. But there is a way to identify them like a pro, even from far away. That eagle for sure, for sure, for sure. Even though they're about the same size, eagles are much heavier than vultures. Hey, big girl. Bald eagles can weigh 14 pounds. When they're soaring, all that weight and muscle means that they fly like this. Wings straight, flying strong and steady. Oh, is that a salmon? Ooh. Soaring vultures hold their wings like this, up in a V. And because they only weigh two to five pounds, vultures get rocked around by air currents. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Whoa! Is that a delicious roadkill raccoon with rabies? Yeah, boy! So just remember, eagle, vulture, eagle, vulture. A bonus way to tell them apart is if you hear them calling. Vultures don't have a syrinx, a bird's vocal organ, so they just kind of grunt and hiss. <clears throat> But if you see a big brown bird around here that sounds like a giant angry mouse, it's a bald eagle. Hi, Sea Doc. This is Lewis and Melinda from Philadelphia. Why does everything try to bite you? Oh, hi, Lewis and Melinda. I think it's because most animals can tell. I'm really quite tasty. Oh, geez. Hands over. When you see us getting close or actually handling wild animals, it's usually because we're checking on their health. Animals enjoy going to the doctor and getting poked and prodded just about as much as you and I do. And the critters don't know that we're trying to help. Wild animals just want to be wild, and they can't say that in our language. He is coming up to bite me. <laughs> okay, I deserve that. They communicate in other ways. Squawking, growling, sometimes even biting. They're not trying to be mean or eat us. They're just trying to say, would you stop doing that now? And even when we're not examining them, sometimes wildlife nibbles on us because they don't have hands. They're like puppy dogs. They use their mouth to explore. Working as a scientist means that we have years of experience, but sometimes we still get bit. Animals can carry diseases and be very unpredictable. That means if you see a sick wild animal, don't touch it. Call in the professionals. Hey, we've got an elephant seal out here with serious gastrointestinal issues. <laughs> yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know, he just started vomiting right after he bit Joe Gato. <laughs> Can you send out a sea doc? Thank you. Hi, sea doc. This is Soli from Washington. You guys do the coolest stuff, and I love that it's all to help the sea and wildlife. I'm in high school, and what I want to know is how do I get your job? You want my job? But I love my job. To answer this one, I'm going to introduce you to the Sea Doc Society's newest scientist. Hi, Soli. I'm Kat Lowe. I always loved the ocean and animals. And when I was in high school, I decided to follow my passion and make a career out of it. So I went to college and got my bachelor's degree in marine biology. And then I got my master's in oceanography. And then I spent a year studying statistical analysis. I'm also a certified scientific scuba diver, and I'm trained in marine mammal stranding, whale disentanglement, and boat handling. <laughs> 
And yeah, we get to do some really cool stuff here. So yeah, one answer is to stay in school and study real hard like Kat, and then come and take her job, not mine. Hey old man, I'm just starting out. But there are other science jobs. You can work with nonprofits like CDOC and with universities, government agencies, local tribes, and private industry. Anybody with a passion can do real science and help wildlife without having to get a boatload of degrees. Scuba divers can join the Reef Environmental Education Foundation and do fish surveys just like us. Anyone who sees whales can contribute data to Orca Network, and at orcasound.net, you can help researchers listen for whales from the comfort of your own home. You can even study your favorite beach by joining COAST, the Coastal Observation and Seabird Survey Team. Organizations like Whale Scout and Skagit Fisheries Enhancement Group need volunteers like you to help restore salmon habitat. Do you like cute little seal pups? You can join your local marine mammal straining network. And there are many more ways for anybody to become a citizen scientist. Or you can just come and try and take Kat's job. Okay, Cousteau, that's it. You're getting put out to pasture. Hi, Sea Doc. This is Noah and Milo, and we're on the beach in Orcas Island. Wait, what'd you find? We were looking around the rocks and we really found a weird squishy thing. Hey, 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 guys, guys, I'm here. What'd you find? This That's thing. What is it? Ooh, look at that. This is an orange sea cucumber. It's not a vegetable, it's an animal. And it's related to urchins and to sea stars. It's very squishy. <laughs> but it only looks like this because the tide is out. Now when the tide comes in and it's covered in water, it takes all of its tentacles and pushes it out and tries to grab things like this and then pushes it into its mouth and eats it. Mmm, yum, yum. Mmm, pretty good. Good find, high five. Let's go find something else. Well, that's it for our first round of Ask Sea Doc. Thanks for all the great questions. And if you have a good question about the Sailor Sea, ask Sea Doc. <laughs>